Hi everyone, my name is Melissa Colloff and today I'm going to be talking about how psychology can help to improve witness identification accuracy. So suppose that you are an eyewitness to a criminal event. Let's see that you let's say that you saw a man steal something from a car. Well, because you've seen the culprit, you're a valuable source of information to the police. The investigating officers will probably ask you to describe the culprit to them, and then sometimes later maybe days or maybe months, they might ask you to try and pick out their suspect from a police identification parade, or sometimes we call this a lineup. So in an identification parade, there will be the police suspect who is either innocent or guilty, and there will also be a number of other people who are known to be innocent, who we call fillers or foils, and these are people who look like the suspect. If you positively identify the police suspect, then this is convincing evidence of guilt um, and suspects who have been identified are more likely, more likely to be charged and are more likely to be convicted at court. So as you can see, eyewitness identification evidence plays a critical role in how um, a case proceeds through the criminal justice system. The, the influence of eyewitness identification evidence might be considered concerning if we look back in history, because we can see um, that eyewitness identification errors have occurred and they have had profound consequences. In the United States since 1989, um, over 350 convictions have been overturned on the basis of new DNA evidence. Um, and of these, the Innocence Project estimates that about 70% of these wrongful convictions involved an eyewitness identification error. So that means that these, these witnesses in these cases incorrectly identified an innocent suspect. There's also another type of error that which, which we must consider, and that is when witnesses fail to identify the guilty suspect when he or she actually is in the lineup. And this error results um, in the culprit being free to commit further crimes. Interestingly, recent research suggests that memory is not inherently unreliable. And so it's perhaps procedures that the justice system use to, uses to collect and interpret eyewitness evidence that could be improved um, to prevent these errors. The question then um, is this. So what procedures ensure that identification evidence is as accurate as possible? And we can use psychological research to answer this question. So psychological scientists conduct studies, experimental studies in the lab to examine the factors that might enhance or impair eyewitness identification accuracy. And they usually do this using um, a standard procedure. Now in these studies then, um, participants who are acting as witnesses watch a mock crime and sometimes this mock crime is, is a video and other times it is acted out in real life. After watching the crime participants then have a filler task to distract them for a while and then they are presented with a lineup and asked to try and identify the culprit um, from the video. Now in the real world we don't know the ground truth and what we mean by this is the police can never be 100% sure that their suspect is innocent or guilty but in a lab study we can manipulate this um, so that we can be sure that we know what what is and is not the correct answer so half of the participants in study in the studies will receive a target present lineup and this is a lineup that contains the guilty um, suspects of the real culprit that they viewed in the video and this Real culprit here is highlighted in green. The other half of, sus of participants, sorry, would receive a target absent lineup, which does not contain the real culprit and instead contains an innocent suspect, who again here is highlighted in green. And this reflects the real world situation in which police officers apprehend an innocent suspect and then put them in a lineup. And what we want to do um, and want to achieve is we want to boost um, correct identifications of guilty suspects but minimize those incorrect identifications of innocent suspects or people who we know um, are not the culprit. Um, so using these methods researchers can examine the identification responses made by, su by subjects to look at what improves or impairs performance. 
Um, and one factor that has been shown to influence accuracy is the lineup medium itself. And what we mean by this is how the lineup members are presented to the participants or the witnesses in real life. So when I say identification parade, I'm sure that most people would think of something like this. So this is a film clip, film um, still from The Usual Suspects, and this shows a live identification parade. Now in a live identification parade, the police suspect would be stood next to people who look similar, and the witness might be behind a two-way mirror and would be asked to, to, be, to be there and to pick out the person who they think was the culprit. So some places around the world still use this method, but other places don't. So in some places, such as um, America, lineups now instead consist of still photo images. So each lineup member would be presented like this, um, which is a static image of the front of the lineup member's face. In other places around the world, such as the UK, um, witnesses are shown video lineups. And these consist of a series of video clips um, like this, in which each lineup member moves their head from left to right and then back to the front. So which method of presenting um, images um, or the lineup members to, to witnesses boosts identification accuracy? Well, the lineup literature is quite mixed. We know that accuracy isn't that great from photo lineups. And so the literature suggests that around 50% of the time, people are accurate from photo lineups. And we're not sure how much videos actually boost this compared to photo lineups. So there's some research that suggests that videos can reduce the number of false identifications compared to photos. But then there's other research that, su that suggests there's no benefit of using videos compared to photos. And some other research that suggests that no matter if you use photos, videos or live lineups, there's no, um, there's no um, noticeable difference on identification accuracy. However, a recent study found that simultaneously presenting photos, um, so presenting the photo lineup in which you can see all of the lineup members at once, boosted performance more than sequentially presenting video lineups. So presenting one video at a time. And that's interesting because it suggests that there might be something about presenting the faces all at once, which helps to boost identification accuracy. So given this mixed picture um, and given that accuracy rates aren't brilliant, we can look to psycholo psychological theory and new technology to maybe develop procedures that might boost identification accuracy further in real witnesses. And that's what we've been doing in the Applied Memory Lab at the University of Birmingham. And we've been creating a novel lineup procedure <coughs> called an interactive lineup. And during an interactive lineup, the witnesses or the subjects in our studies can click on and rotate the face to see it from multiple different angles. And there's good reason to suggest that this might improve accuracy over the existing procedures that are used around the world. And one reason um, that the interactive lineup might be good is due to pose reinstatement. And what I mean by this is that during an interactive lineup, witnesses can turn the face to view the side of the face that they encoded. So what this means is that if you viewed or witnessed a crime and you saw the right side of the perpetrator's face, in an interactive lineup, you'd be free to drag um, the lineup faces so that you can view the angle um, that you had seen and encoded into your memory. So research does suggest that pose reinstatement can improve accuracy, but it has never been tested in a lineup um, scenario before. So we set out to investigate, is pose reinstatement important? And to do this, we use the standard procedure that I spoke about earlier. Witnesses or subjects in our study viewed a mock crime video. And in this mock crime video, they either saw the perpetrator from the left profile, the front or the right profile. Then they completed a brief filler task and then they were given a lineup and they had to try and identify the person that they'd seen earlier or state that he wasn't in the lineup. And interestingly, we found um, that participants rotated the faces in the lineup to match the side of the perpetrator, perpetrator's face that they had seen in the mock crime video. And that suggests um, that people are interested and remember 
what they have seen uh, and try to use that when making an identification decision during the lineup task. So the next question then is, do interactive lineups improve identification performance more than existing procedures, such as photo lineups um, that are used around, the, around America? And, and we started testing this too. So in this study, we have a range of different mock crime videos. And what we do this for is to ensure that our results are generalizable beyond just one stimulus set. So we want our results to talk generally about a wide range of crimes that could happen in real life and a wide, wide range of appearance of perpetrators, uh, which is why we use lots of different stimuli, like, stimuli um, like this. The participants would only watch one mock crime video though and try and complete one lineup task. So in this study, we compared photo sequential lineups, which still images were presented one at a time to the subjects in the experiments. And then at the end of the lineup, they would have to say if the perpetrator from the video was present or not. Or half of the subjects got an interactive sequential lineup. So again, each face was shown one by one, but each face um, was, inter was an interactive um, model of a head and so the participants could click on and rotate the faces to view them from different angles. And this means that we can directly compare the benefit of interactive sequential lineups to photo sequential lineups. So what did we find? So higher bars here indicate better memory performance um, and so this shows interactive lineups where boosted um, participants memory um, accuracy compared to the static photo lineups, um, which is a really promising result. Now, one really um, interesting and exciting part of the interactive lineup that we've developed here is that it allows the faces, or it could allow the faces, to be presented simultaneously which means that you could see all of the lineup faces at the same time and also interact. Now, previously, this hasn't been possible because um, videos, which do allow you to see more angles of the face, can't be presented at the same time. Because if you have six videos of faces all moving at different rates, it's very confusing um, and, and too much to take in at once. So... What we went on to test next is, does the presentation format of the interactive lineup influence accuracy? So we developed um, two more types of interactive lineup. We had a simultaneous lineup, which means all the faces are presented at once, that had independent movement. So when a witness or a subject clicks on the face, only the face that they are clicking on at that moment in time moves um, as, they, as they are dragging their mouse. Another lineup that we have developed is a simultaneous lineup again, so all the faces displayed simultaneously at the same time, but when the witness or the subject clicks on a face, all of the faces move in sync together. So based on psychological theory, this joint movement lineup should improve performance the most because um, you, it allows for easy comparison of features across the lineup members when all of the, all of the faces are in the same angle. So we set out to test this in another study. So in this study, we compared interactive sequential lineups, which is what we've used in our previous study. So one by one, the faces are presented on the screen and the participant can interact with those to view them from different angles. Or participants saw the simultaneous independent movement lineup, which looked like this. And when you clicked on the face, only one face moved. Or some other participants saw an interactive lineup in which had joint movement. So if you clicked on one face, all of the faces move together. And again, this allows us to directly compare how presentation format um, influences identification accuracy. And in these studies, again, we collect data from thousands of subjects um, from around the world um, to, to, ensure that, to ensure that we can to ensure that we have enough power for analyses um, and to ensure that our results are generalizable. So here are the results for this last study. And what we can see again is that higher bars indicate mem mem better memory performance. And so the simultaneous line lineup with joint movement outperformed the simultaneous lineup with independent movement and both were better than the sequential um, interactive lineup. 
So this is the, the sequential is what we tested in our previous study. And we can see from here that we can get performance even higher when we present the faces simultaneously and allow people to interact. And this is really promising because it's really hard to improve discrimina discrimination accuracy um, of witnesses using procedures such as these. So in conclusion then, uh, we'd say that eyewitnesses and eyewitness identifications play a key role in the justice system, but psychological research can help us to understand and improve the accuracy of those identifications. We can use psycho scientific methods and also psychological theory to help us know how to boost identification accuracy in the real world. And finally, interactive lineups that we've developed here um, in the Applied Memory Lab seem to be a promising way to improve identification performance in the real world. And we've developed this in such a way that it would be low cost to implement. So it, it could be used with existing video libraries um, that the UK, the UK police hold, for example and it wouldn't um, need much change to existing procedures um, in how police collect evidence from witnesses. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you would like to know any more about our research, please feel free to log on to our lab website or you can join us on Twitter and use the hashtag memoryESRC18.